So we've got a lot of things that are, that are going on in the production side, but what about on the, uh, on the consumption side? Well, what we do find is that pornography affects women, as men as well, by the way, but women are less studied than men. All of these, by the way, affect young boys too. But it changes the way they think about sexual relationships. It increases their belief that porn is kind of the same thing as real life. It's what it's supposed to look like. Because let's face it, when you're, when you're, when you're born and you come out of the womb and you see a naked breast, what do you think? Dinner. Right? That's what you think. When you're five and you see a naked breast, what do you think? Mom doesn't have any clothes on. When you're 10 and you see a naked breast, you open up that, that mattress and the Playboy's under there, you kind of start feeling something, right? It's unusual because puberty has kicked in. The brain now has these reproductive circuits that had lying dormant are now going online. Now you notice them. You don't know what to do with them because you're 10. Right? You're just starting to go through puberty. But when you're 20, you know exactly what to do with it because presumably you've learned, you've heard, you've listened, you've seen what is the appropriate sexual relationship. We, porn is being used as sex education, but for thousands of years, we didn't need porn to procreate. We kind of figured it out in the bedroom. It was, we didn't need someone to show me, this is how you stand, this is how you stand, this is what I do, and then it happens. So what you find is this change in the attitudes. The more you view porn, the more you think that it's real life the more that you think it actually should be applied in real life. We begin to see sex as having this instrumental view. That is, well, it's, it's, it's all about the mechanics of orgasm, right? I need to find the right position. She needs to find the right position. We need to play this out. And so what porn does is it strip mines sexuality. It takes the top level of the sacred aspect of it off. Then it takes the social aspect of it off. Then it takes the moral aspect of it off. And then it strips away the emotion so that all you are left with is the basal, carnal, sensual aspect of it. But over time, even that is stripped away and you are left with nothing. Even the orgasm becomes unfulfilling. And so you chase after the next one like it's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That first hit that you've ever had feels like the first time. Well, your brain is adapting so that it can't feel like the first time, by the way. So you become more and more sexually distracted, more and more permissive, looking for sex outside of its normal healthy context. And at the end of the day, it just becomes a recreational sport. You just kind of do it for fun. As long as nobody gets hurt, there's no big deal. Now, as a brain scientist, we can kind of go in and look at what happens if we show porn to people who are in fMRI machines or pets or any number of other brain imaging devices, and what we find are pretty significant, straightforward results with men. Boom, this area lights up, these areas all light up, and we look over here, we've got men on the left. This is from a, a group of men, and these are women. And you'll notice, wow, there's a lot going on here with the men, and not near as much with the women. Meh. Ladies don't. I mean, there's something. There's something going on up there. But what you find is these yellows, by the way, are really, really high levels. These regions here, you know what activates them? Heroin, crack, cocaine, methamphetamine, activates these natural reward systems that are wired up for sex. Pornography activates them. You know what diffuses this? being told before you go into the scanner, we're gonna show you some sexual images, and what we would like you to do is to try to rein your sexuality in. Just being given the instruction, this is what's on its way, get ready. Try to manage this. Being intentional about managing your sexual impulses will actually diffuse a lot of the activity in these regions. It's just that we walk around mindlessly, passively, just sort of taking it in and thinking that we can't control the impulse. So we give it free reign and let it go wild. Now, this was taken from about 10 years ago, men versus women. What we're seeing more of in our lab, because we're seeing more and more female sex addicts or porn addicts, that's why they might self-identify, although we might take issue with the way they're using that terminology. What we're finding is that more and more women used to look like this, but now are looking like this. 
You see, brothers, what we're doing in our pornified culture is we're strip mining the beauty of femininity and we're forcing them to become masculine in their sexual styles. So you're seeing lots of young women who are complaining about not being able to get an orgasm from their partner. They're going out and they're buying sex toys. They're becoming much more masturbatory in their sexual patterns, much like adolescent boys do. And so what we're seeing is a drift away from thinking about sexuality as something that is great to moving to this script that says, sister, you gotta look like this. This is the payoff you're supposed to get. And so what you find is that porn is causing many young women to be very insecure about their bodies. So you know what they do? They go and they get breast implants or they feel bad about their body. So in order to take claim over their body, to make them more sexual, boom, they get a tattoo right here. Why? Because that's what you see when you're having sex from behind. That's what these models look like. And I'm gonna to try to take over my body and claim it again as my own. That's a, a common thing for young women to do now. And I hope I'm not being too crass here. I'm not trying to be, but we need to be mature and we need to be straightforward and take this on. Right, kind of right up front and not pretend like it's not there. So what we do see is that the more pornography women view, and men, the less confident they are, the less comfortable they are, the more socially isolated they become, the more maladjusted they are, the more mental health issues they have, the less likely they are able to bond with parents. Now, we also know that there's an awful lot of research on the brain and how the brain kind of learns. There's these things called mirror neurons. I've written a bit about these. But if I raise my hand like this, neurologically, you are raising your hand. All you have to do is see me do that. So if I kind of, if I say, I'm gonna do an action and I want you to mimic the action, but I want you to wait until I mimic the act, until I tell you to, I'm gonna do this. Now, if I were to ask you to do that, how many of you think you could pull that off? Most of you probably could, right? But in order to do it, you actually have to execute it. Can I have one person? Can I ask you, can you just do what I did? Yeah, easy to do, right? Learned it, observational learning. It's easy to do. Now that was not a tricky thing to do, right? But when you think about the complexity of sexual intimacy, when you watch something, you might not be doing it physically, but neurologically you are vicariously doing what you are watching. So whether it be a rape scene or some other type of you know, behavior where you've stumbled into something, you're thinking the person, okay, you've seen men and women engaging in this sexual act, and then the man just reaches over and just hits her. Wait a minute, I didn't know that was coming. Well, neurologically, you're now coded to be more predisposed to do that. You might entertain that as something that you might want to try. Right? So porn teaches us neurologically. And so, you know, it doesn't necessarily make you have more partners, but it warps your sense of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate.